If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 106 of the Career Mode Road to Glory. Today we've got some transfer targets, although quickly I will run you through the, uh, the emails that we got at the end of the last season and at the beginning of this season. Obviously the uh, objective for last season was to avoid relegation. The board were delighted at the fact that we finished mid-table and uh, they wanted us to uh, get to the round of 32 of the cup, I think. I think we got to the round of... I think we lost in the round of 32. I can't quite remember, but we definitely, obviously, clearly achieved what the board wanted from us. Uh, the league objective for the upcoming season is to finish mid-table again. Obviously, we finished 10th last year, which uh, was respectable, and they're probably higher than uh, they're expecting here. They're probably hoping for somewhere kind of 14th, 13th, 14th and upwards, which uh, hopefully we can achieve again this year. Uh, domestic Cup objective, quickly, is uh, to get, reach the round of 32 stage again. And the season budget is £8 million. I was hoping for a little bit more but it's definitely the biggest budget that we've had given to us so far and a wage budget of 35,000 which actually isn't that much um, obviously we uh, spent some of the money that we got for uh, finishing 10th of the Barclays Premier League on a couple of youth scouts that are currently out scouting new talent right now so hopefully they will come back with a couple of absolute gems for us in the youth setup and we can use those and it will save us a bit of money I've uh, altered the budget slightly to uh, offer a couple of contracts to people and uh, obviously send out a couple of uh, other scouts, actual genuine global transfer network scouts that uh, are out right now looking for uh, for players. I've got just first team quality is the thing that I'm looking for right now. Maybe even players that uh, have you know a shorter contract span left at the club that they're at so that we can maybe pick them up a little bit cheaper. We are looking to strengthen in every area and my shortlist is very long right now. But uh, a few players, or quite actually quite a few players, I think, I'm waiting on uh, scout reports to come back on before I definitely know whether I can or can't, uh, you know, approach the club in question and try and get them into the club. Jack Butland is on the, the list and has been for a couple of transfer targets episodes now, and I might be looking to bring him in. Obviously, wages are going to be an issue, unfortunately, this year, because obviously a lot of our squad right now, we actually don't pay anyone more than £9,000 in our current contract uh, span of all of the players at the club. Yet everybody that we're looking to bring in is going to be on contracts of around about 25 grand and upwards. So uh, contracts might be a bit of a stumbling block. We may have to kind of utilise the uh, kind of player plus cash deal type thing to get some players in. Because uh, whilst we have, well now, six and a half or seven million to spend, I may need to knock that down to about five million total to uh, on the transfer budget to free up enough money in the wage budget to bring in two or three players so at the minute I'm looking at these three goalkeepers although obviously people like Luke Daniels are going to be well out of my price range I was just curious to see what he's actually valued or what he's actually uh, rated at etc because uh, those stats look incredible considering he's a 30 year old guy random guy from West Brom's youth setup but regardless uh, obviously we are now in the fifth season so players are getting on a little bit players like Jack Butland are now 25 Costa Pantillon is now 31 uh, Callum Chambers is now 23 looking at him and uh, Chimo Navarro as well from Almeria looks like a decent right back obviously uh, our current right back Mehdi Zafane still out for five months with a torn ACL and obviously we had Hector Bayerin on loan from Arsenal last year and he's gone back to Arsenal so we're looking at uh, Chimo Navarro there actually weren't too many outstanding new young uh, free agents available on the list we've got Marco Palenz here who uh, could potentially be a decent right back to grow and I might actually try and look at him and Manik Vermeer I'm waiting to see uh, what he's actually rated at overall before I definitely go in for him but he could be someone we could definitely pick up I'm not too sure what his individual stats are going to be though want to wait for the scout report as well so I know exactly what those tackling stats are because if they are above 70 I'd definitely be interested if they're kind of near the 65 then I'd maybe look elsewhere Christian Gamboa is another player I'd be interested in bringing in but again it depends on price and wages uh, looking at centre-backs we've got quite a few centre-backs here to look at as well uh, Andre Osborne at uh, Derby is a player that does look very decent only 20 years of age could look to bring him in Karen Rakik we can maybe look to loan in as well obviously uh, Manchester City's youngster although now he's 23 years of age uh, there's this guy at Southampton that looks very decent, actually, but obviously, as you can see, very highly valued. But we might be able to pick him up quite cheap if I can wangle a deal for player plus cash. Also looking at uh, Timothy Kolodzizak. Kolodzizak? 
I'm not really too sure how to pronounce that, I apologise, but uh, he looks very, very good as well. A lot of these players, we're waiting for uh, scout reports to come back on, like Jonathan Tarr and Thomas Kalash, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what they say, because I think they might just be out of my price range. But again, I'm uh, keeping my options open. So you can see at left back, we're looking at Andy Keller. He's been on the... Uh, the the watch list for a while and he looks like someone that we could genuinely bring in would be a good uh, a good addition to the squad. I also think are looking at Abdul Rahman Baba, although his wages are about thirty thousand I think, so he could be that could be a little bit of a stumbling block with him. Again, see value wise we could quite easily afford one point eight million, but that would leave us that would take up all of our wage budget. So it's a, it's a frustrating situation to be up right now, but hopefully we can sort ourselves out throughout the window. And then, fingers crossed, we can get some decent prize money this year as well. And uh, we can actually have a decent amount to go into the next season as well and into January. Uh, Andrew Robertson we're looking at as well from Hull. Ryan Bertrand, another player I'd be, I'd be interested in. 2.5 million is, again, very affordable, but £35,000 a week on his wages is not very affordable. So... As you can probably tell from all of these different things, it is going to be the wages that make or break a lot of deals this year. Uh, looking at Besic as well, waiting to see what uh, his stats come back as. Uh, Barry Bannon I'd probably use as a central player rather than a wide player, although he can play in both positions. And he looks very good as well. I'm not sure what his wages are. 35000 again, so probably going to be a bit, of a, <clears throat> a bit of a stumbling block. But we could afford uh, his actual... Uh, asking price so we'll have to wait and see obviously going to have a look at Yuri Tielemans uh, looking at Ruben Neves as well as well as Lucas Romero who's obviously very good as well Cristobal Diaz is a centre mid that I need to get some uh, more scouting done on him just to see what those stats are actually like but he could come in and do a job as well if we can move on players like because we've got players like Ricky Ring and Tom Elliott and Ryan Donaldson that we just don't want at the club anymore but we haven't been able to move on and if we can move them on then I will look to bring in another centre mid also looking at Nathan Redmond as well as Kakli Kacchaniklic at uh, Fulham. He looks like he could be good. It could be a decent acquisition if he's affordable. Uh, there are a few cams and centre forwards we're looking at as well as you can see. Albert uh, Rusnak at Man City is a youngster that looks decent, as well as Marcos Lopez, who's another youngster at Man City that looks like he could be okay. Sone Luco is probably out of my price range, but we'll wait for the scout report on him and a more detailed scout report on Andreas Feynman as well. When it comes to strikers, I think I've got a left winger here, Julian Brandt, but, or Julian Brandt, sorry. He's been on the watch list for a while. And then strikers still got Slivka here as well although he's probably going to be out of my price range Quezzi is always going to stay on the transfer watch list and uh, we might be able to bring him back to the club later on in our uh, in this particular series hopefully the return of the king will happen uh, British on Bologna, obviously he came to my attention playing football manager with Nottingham Forest and he looks very good on uh, FIFA as well although again uh, his value is quite high. Luciano Vieto, his value will be very high as well, but I really want to have a look at him if I possibly can. The same with Samed Yesil. He's grown quite nicely so far in this particular career mode, so I would be very interested in having a look at him. You can see his finishing stats look very good indeed, and Danny Ings has grown nicely as well. Somehow still only valued at 3.5 million, so uh, I really am interested in Danny Ings. As you can see, his stats look very good. And I'd be extremely interested in trying to bring him in if I possibly can as well. Interest being shown by Hatafe though, so we may have to uh, meet the uh, the valuation and offer a little bit more plus a player to get Danny Ings in. But they're the players I'm looking at right now, and uh, obviously you'll see this on Friday, I think, and tomorrow or over the weekend in tomorrow's episode and Sunday and Monday's episodes, we'll uh, try and filter in some suggestions that you guys give in the comment section as well. But it is key to remember that our wage budget is going to be a definite. Uh, stumbling block as you can see if i alter it down to uh 50 50 even we can free up uh, or 60 40 sorry we can free up a large uh, larger wage budget but it significantly decreases our transfer budget so we can maybe bring in two players that cost 35 grand a week wage wise and try and use the transfer budget there as it is or maybe try and get someone who's a little bit cheaper and spend a little bit more it's going to be a case of really playing with the budget and hopefully selling a few players on you'll see here I'm actually negotiating contracts with a lot of people right now. A few of them actually don't want more than what they're on. And in fact, someone wanted actually to be paid less, which is exactly what I want, really. But uh, as you can see, uh, a few players transfer listed. Greg Taylor, I don't want. Ron Donaldson, uh, Harrison Dunk, Tom Elliott and Ricky Ring are all up for transfer. Uh, Kevin Schmidt, I'm willing to let go out on loan, despite the uh, the way that he actually played half a, half a dozen games for us last season. Uh, Mawa, again, we're going to send him out on loan to hopefully help increase his rating again. Joe Dunk will go out on loan, as will Bridge. And hopefully he can get uh, some good first-team experience and really start to grow 
as we head into uh, season number five. And then fingers crossed, these uh, in, these good youth scouts will come back with some really good players that uh, we can filter into the first team and that will actually save us some money. But that is going to bring today's episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Obviously, as always, feel free to leave the video a like rating if you enjoy it. It really helps me out. And uh, drop the video, or drop the channel, sorry, a subscription if you aren't subscribed already. As I record this, we're coming up on 60,000. We may have hit that already. We may not have hit that already. I'm not entirely too sure by the time you see this on Friday. But uh, that is going to bring today's episode to a close. We'll be streaming tonight over on twitch.tv forward slash Chesnoy Gaming. Links will be in the description as well as uh, links to Twitter, to Instagram, to Facebook and to G2A. But I will end it now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.